The NASCAR Wheel in Euro Series will return to Francia Corta in Northern Italy for the third and fourth rounds of its championship on the 11th and 12th of May. Last year's encounter provided some fantastic racing, wheel-to-wheel -wheel action all the way through. As lock breaks and they're still side by side. A little bit of contact and there's more contact. He's put him into a spin. It's another win and more championship points. along to Northern Italy and Autodromo di Franciacorta for the third round of the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. The Italian fans love their NASCAR racing and pure racing and they'll get to see plenty of that over the course of this weekend. There are two divisions, four races per weekend. Elite one is for the pro drivers where Ander Villarino is the championship leader and Elite two is for the young and the amateur drivers. Giorgio Maggi leads the championship. Well, Francia Quarter is just 2.5 kilometers long. It's a tight and a twisty circuit and difficult to overtake. Well, Ante Villarino leads the championship as a result of two back-to-back -back victories in his home NASCAR Grand Prix at Spain when we were there for rounds one and two in Valencia. The Elite One races slightly longer this year, 29 laps for the first race of the weekend for the Elite One division. And they'll be heading out onto the circuit very, very shortly. Alan Day was the quickest man in qualifying, so he lines up the Chevrolet SS for Cal Racing on pole position. And it will be Mark Goosens, the number 78 car for Brax Racing that's alongside. Ex-Formula One World Champion Jack Villeneuve's on row number two, alongside Nicola Rocca, who of course is here for his home NASCAR Grand Prix in Italy and will be hoping for good things over the course of the weekend. Buckle up, we go green. Race number one gets underway. It's a good start from Alan Day, but looks as though Mark Goosens is trying to brave it out. We ride on board with Stinis Longin, but it's Alan Day that leads. Mark Goosens in second place. Jack Villeneuve is there in third. Nicola Rocca is there in fourth place. And a spin further back for Alan. Alex Cafe ran through turn number three. Mauro Trioni hits him, and it's Trioni who's upside down with the contact that was made between himself and the rotating Alex Cafe. There's problems elsewhere around the lap as well, and that's Ander Villarino, the championship leader, that's facing the wrong way. Other cars sort of scrabbling out of the gravel. Martin Dubeck, I think, was one of them. Safety car out. We need to sweep up the mess, and then we can get racing back underway here in Frangia Quarter. But there is poor old Mauro Trioni's car. Strong old cars. He'll be fine. And it looked as though it's quite a slow roll. Not not too much damage, fingers crossed. We go green once more, and it's Alan Day who gets a good restart again. Mark Goosens is trying to fend off the attack of Jack Villeneuve, who's side by side with Nicola Rocca. Alex Sedgwick looking to try and get past Stinis Longin at the wheel of the number 11 PK Car Sport car. It's all rather close to say the least, but the front few cars looking to try and break away. Giammarco Urkeli, the number nine car, under pressure from the 42 in the hands of Luigi Ferrara. But as they head over the start finish line, it's Alan Day that leads the race. Alex Sedgwick under pressure, Giammarco Urkeli almost with two wheels on the grass as he defends from Luigi Ferrara. And now they're under pressure from Ander Villarino, who's carving his way back up through the field at the wheel of the 48. Alan Day, though, has been the man to beat here over the last few years. He's pulling away in the lead of the race. A great fight going on for third, fourth and fifth. And Martin Dubeck into the gravel. That will bring about another safety car. We get the race back underway once more as we ride on board with the man who's second in the championship, Stinis Longy. To his right is Loris Hazemans. They're all side by side heading round through turn number one. The first three corners are all right-handers here. So you have to be careful on the restarts. And Alan Day has got the jump again over everybody else. Mark Goosen slots himself back into second place. Jacques Villeneuve is there in third position, but under pressure from Stinis Longin, and then that number 50 car in the hands of Loris Hazemans, and contact there. Stinis Longin is bumped into by the 42 of Luigi Ferreira, and that is going to mean that Stinis Longin is going to drop down through the order. He's another front runner in the championship. Problems early doors for Ander Villarino leading the championship, and problems there for Stinis Longin. The car is still going, though. Hazemans side by side with Nicola Rock and looking to try and work his way through up towards turn number nine. They turn their way through turn number nine, up towards turn number 10, and Loris Hazemans is looking for the overlap here as they head up towards 10. Cola Rocker runs a little bit wide, and that's going to allow Loris 
Hazemans to have the inside line as they head into the uphill braking area for the right-hand hairpin at turn number 11. Hazemans will surely grab the place here. Nicola Rock is going to try and brave it out around the outside at 11 to get the inside line for turn number 12. That is not going to work, though. And now he needs to close the door to try and prevent Luigi Ferrara coming through. Look at the battered number 42 car of Ferrara, but he's almost alongside and locked brakes from Nicola Rocca. Does have to yield on the position there. Puts Ferrara now as the leading Italian we've got in the race at his home NASCAR Grand Prix. Alan Day is on for surely now. Win number 18 of his NASCAR career. Through the final corner he goes. Accelerates his way over the start finish line and Alan Day secures the victory. Mark Goosens comes through and finishes in second place and it's her first NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series podium position for Jacques Villeneuve who finishes in third position. And Loris Hazemans finishing in fourth place. That will give him the junior trophy category win. Alan Day on the top step of the podium very shortly, but for the moment on the roof of the number 54 car, receiving the congratulations of the team. So now let's hear from the race winner. I had to push from the very beginning to the very end. And yeah, it was crazy to see the start. I'm so happy that my teammate is okay. Uh, it's so fun to see a, a car like that. I'm glad everybody's okay and the cars are safe and the drivers are safe. And yeah, pole position tomorrow. I will do my best to win again. 18 times a winner, four wins at Frontier Quarter, but the first one this year goes the way of Alan Day. Loris Hazemans claimed top honours in the Junior Trophy from Nicola Rocca and Giamarco Urkeli, and in the Challenger Trophy, Henry Tumala from Ellen Law and Ken Komura. Well, it's the third consecutive year that the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series has come to Francia Quarter, and year on year on year, the fans just keep flocking in to enjoy the racing. We caught up with a driver from the Elite Two division, Mike Snyder, to get his thoughts. Well, it's uh, it's very interesting, you know. Uh, the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series has done their uh, done their best to try and create a uh, NASCAR experience over here in Europe, and uh, they've gotten pretty close. This series is a lot of fun because I get to drive fast uh, Ford Performance Ford Mustangs and. Racing Engineering is a really good group, and yeah, I enjoy working with them. Well, Myatt might only be 24 years of age, but he's got lots of experience, including racing in the NASCAR Gander Outdoors Truck Series. So we asked him, when he's in Europe, does he feel at home? Try and do their best to, you know, to recreate what the American weekend would look like. So yeah, there's there's some stereotypes that I, I, I enjoy seeing, you know, like the, the flyover especially. So uh, yeah, at some points I do feel like I'm at home. Two, the first two races of the season, a win and a seventh place was enough to give the number 50 car of Giorgio Maggi the championship lead by just one point from Vittorio Garelli. In the Elite Two division, slightly shorter races this year compared to Elite One. Around the 2.5 kilometer Francia quarter circuit, they will get 24 racing laps. In qualifying, it was the French teenager Florian Venturi who put the number 32 Go Fast Racing Chevy onto pole position. And it's Lassie Sorensen making his debut in the championship, the Dane, who lines up alongside Andre Castro and Giorgio Maggi, the championship leader, sit there on row number two. So buckle up, everybody. We're about to go green for the first time for the Elite Two division in Francia Quarter. It's a good start from Florian Venturi. It looks as though Andre Castro has made a good start as well from third on the grid. He's up to second as we ride on board that car heading round through turn number two. The thundering great big V8 engine working hard in the early stages of the race. There's a spin further back. That's Martin Dubeck, third in the championship, spins in the middle of the pack. Cars break right, cars break left. There's a car on the grass as well. That's Thomas Krasinus who has a spin as a result of his grassy moment. And Dubeck somehow got away with it. He's dropped to the very last place as out front leading the race is Florian Venturi. It is Andre Castro there in second place. This is the number 77 car of Freddy Hemberg. He's got cars all around him, one of which is the German. German driver Justin Kutz, the next of which is the Indian driver Advait Dioda. They are having a great fight, and here's another little trio busy squabbling away as well. That is Jerry DeVert, the number 78 car, trying to squeeze his way past Ariana Casoli. The two of those eligible for the Legend Trophy, so they'll be fighting it out. We go back on board with second place Andre Castro trying to hunt down race leader Florian Venturi, who all of a sudden slows directly in front of Andre Castro. And Florian Venturi leading the race is heading in towards retirement. Some sort of mechanical issue with the car. He pulls the car off, stricken on the left-hand side of the circuit, and he is going to be hugely, hugely disappointed with that. The battles will still continue around the circuit. Number eight, Nicholas Risitano, under pressure from the number nine car in the hands of Vittorio Gorelli, who is working his way up through the 
forward here, the Italian. He's got past Nicolas Rizzitano. He's now managed to catch up with Nave Talo and is looking to try and put the Israeli driver under pressure. Has the inside line as they head in towards turn number 10. Bounces off the curbs, the two of them side by side on the way out of the corner. Good stuff this between the two fairly similarly liveried cars, but it does look as though Corelli might just be able to sneak up the inside on the brakes here. Nave Taylor, though, comes across, closes the door, makes sure that he keeps the Italian behind, and he'll have to stay behind because safety car is out. They'll recover Florian Venturi's car and Ben Kriener, the Scotsman, the teenager, the youngest ever NASCAR driver at 16 years of age, backwards in the gravel. So cars cleared out the way, we get racing back underway, and it is Andre Castro that takes up the lead of the race. Lassie Sorensen, though, making his debut going well. Here's Bert Longin, side by side with Giorgio Maggi. They almost bounced off each other. The American Myatt Snyder might be able to work his way through. Bert Longin still looking to try and hang on to the place from Giorgio Maggi. He's got the inside line at turn number nine, but then runs wide, misses the apex, and Myatt Snyder's going to go up the inside of both of them by the look of things. Two places gained for Myatt Snyder, and it looks as though also gaining a position there was Justin Kuntz. Great stuff going on further down through the order. The battles continue, but out front it is Andre Castro, who is coming under enormous pressure from Lassie Sorensen. We ride on board the second place car in the hands of the Dane. He's looking for the inside line and he's going to go through, making his debut, his first ever NASCAR wheel and Euro Series race. And he leads from Andre Castro in second position. And he's going to come through to take the chequered flag. Problems for Castro on the final lap means that it's Myatt Snyder that takes second position ahead of Giorgio Maggi, the championship leader who's there in third. Justin Kuntz completes the top four. What a race and what a debut for that man there for Dexweck DF1 Racing and the Dane. Lassie Sorensen is delighted. His first race in the NASCAR Wheeling Euro Series and a victory. Let's hear from our race winner. Thanks to the whole team, Dexford DF1 Racing. They did an amazing job keeping the car clean so I could, could get through whole, the, the whole race. Um, I'm super happy for, for the performance. Um, everything went well. We were a bit lucky this time. But I think the speed was good and, and we really proved that we are able to run in the front. And um, I think we're going to be seen up there the rest of the season. Well, congratulations to Lassie Sorensen. He stands on the top step of the podium. It's the first podium also for the American Myatt Snyder with his second position. Celebrations here at Francia Corta. In the rookie classification, it was the same as the top three overall. Sorensen from Snyder from Giorgio Maggi. And in the legend trophy, it was Ian Eric Varden that claimed top honours. And the Lady Trophy win went the way of Ariana Casoli.